Welcome to the Dermastore Podcast. A chat about all things skincare, skin health. And if you're a real skin nerd, we, we hope, hope you'll, you'll join, join the, the conversation. conversation. Welcome to episode 21 of the Dermastore Podcast. Hey, Laura, how are you doing? Morning, Greg. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Feels strange not to be wearing headphones today. I know. We're trying something different. Yeah, getting some video in here. So it's a very important topic. We're tackling holiday melasma so after the holidays we've noticed quite a few people running around with darker marks on their face which is typical. can definitely see who had a holiday in the sun that's yeah for sure. so joining us in the podcast studio is ian webster again our dermatologist how are you dr webster i'm well thank you laura what did you use this morning this morning greg i used my keels remember the name okay. it's the it's the clay exfoliating oh, yeah, cleanser the rare earth, the rare earth cleanser mm-hmm. i love yeah the exfoliating polishing effect that it gives yeah and then i used la roche posay's vitamin c serum this morning okay yeah 10 percent nice followed by zo skin health hydrating cream a really mixed bag of goodies today mm-hmm. and my uh, faithful color science uh, sunscreen. I, this week, actually, I've been testing the Heliocare 90, the Ultra 90 yes. cream. Okay. And I've been testing it, but then I thought, oh, it's definitely actually a winter product. It's very mm. rich. And so I, I didn't use that this morning. I've been, and then I went back to Color Science. What did you use? I used CeraVe Foaming Cleanser mm-hmm. just in the shower. Dr. Barbara's Sturm Facial Scrub as well, which is lovely. C for Alic. And then I use an Arbutin 7% lotion, like a moisturizer that we're testing. Okay, yes. And then Marty D Active D. So Love it. no surprises there. Okay. What did you use this morning, Dr. Webster? The Isden Nutridica. Okay, yes. The Nutridica for my seborrheic dermatitis. Okay. So that's my regular every morning. My skincare, actually, Greg, mm. I just wanted to say, um, doesn't stop at the humans in our household with Sean and I. Oh. It extends to our bulldogs. <laughs> And I'll tell you why. It, the, the heat wave in Cape Town is so intense yeah. and bulldogs are susceptible to heat rashes. Yeah. So thermal spring water <laughs> out of the fridge <laughs> on the bulldogs, it works like an absolute bomb. Actually, <laughs> you said that Sarah water. was using the Ven one in the office yesterday un- under the fan, spraying it through the fan <laughs> just to keep That's herself clever. cool. I love And then Keenan asked, can I drink it? <laughs> I was like, well... We have actually sprayed it before in our mouths. It's just thermal spring water. Just thermal spring water. Alrighty. So jumping on to today's episode, as we mentioned in the build-up, melasma is a tricky condition and you've got to know the right way to treat it, the right way to tackle it. Obviously, it's brought on by changes in hormones and the sun. And what are the kind of pillars? And we've got four pillars, essentially, uh, in, in terms of how we would approach treating melasma. Should we just start by identifying what it is and how to identify it? It tends to occur in people with a darker skin tone. And what they what happens, you get darker patches, usually on the cheeks, the forehead, and on the upper lip. That's a common area. And it's it's usually in women. Rarely men do get it, but it's almost always in women. I mean, I see a lot of people with lighter skins also with melasma. Yes, they can. Yes, yeah, they can. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I think it, it's more common in darker skins. It's more common in darker skins, yeah. I see a lot of young people, people who who like the outdoors. Yeah, it's it's very prevalent, I think, especially in South Africa. So w- why is it tricky to treat? Why would we consider it a tricky to treat? Well, essentially, there, there's three sort of types of melasma. Okay. Number one, you get what you call the epidermal melasma, where the pigment is just in the top layer of the skin. Yeah. <clears throat> so that often happens... A woman becomes pregnant, she gets a bit of pigmentation mm-hmm. because she has a new sunscreen. After the baby's born, she uses the sunscreen regularly and the pigment that pigmentation can disappear. So that epidermal form of melasma can sometimes disappear spontaneously. Most forms of melasma are what you call a combination. So in other words, it's a combination of epidermal with dermal. Right. So it's in the top layer as well as in the, in the dermis. So often when I examine patients, just by looking at them, you can't say... You, unless you do a biopsy or use mole mapping or vizier, you can't say where the pigment is sitting. Yeah. So often when you start off the treatment, the epidermal form responds very nicely. So you'll often get an improvement, mm. but where the pigment is sitting deep in the dermis, that is more stubborn. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, that dermal melasma where it's sitting deep in the dermis 
uh, that is uh, incredibly difficult to treat. And one of the things that we s- have seen that main causes of melasma, so darker skin tone with more melanin in your skin, and then estrogen, or if you're taking estrogen-containing contraceptives, yes. those two are the dominant. Yes. The the constant is the sun. Exactly. So unfortunately exactly. with your treatment, you'll see an improvement. But like you always say, as soon as you step into the sun, we're going to take step backwards. Exactly. So you've always got to have mm. that in mind. That's The sun is the number one. That is the common denominator. Yeah. And more and more now, visible light is, yeah. is we know, visible light in darker skin tones yes. can also uh, you know, make melasma worse, pigmentation worse. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so that's really cool. And I think what I wanted to share with everyone today is although melasma is very difficult and tricky to treat and it can be incredibly frustrating, Mm. the steps to treating it is actually very simple. And so hopefully we're going to guide you on that today if you Mm. follow these four steps. If you follow the advice, I think that's the tricky part is that some people, oh, we just had load shedding. (laughs) (laughs) South Africa. Always fun. (laughs) Uh, so yeah, if if you follow the advice, I think some people get really frustrated by it, and they take sort of alternative therapy routes before actually seeking the real help, the yes. professional help, and that often can make it worse. So yeah, that's why I think the purpose of this is very important: is that hopefully you can get out the starting gate as soon as you see it, you notice it. Tackling it or addressing it earlier is the key. Absolutely. Um, so the first pillar is really, you know, as we kind of mentioned already, is sun avoidance, wearing protective clothing, seeking the shade, and using sun protection. Yeah, that's the first and foremost sort of. No, I agree. And also, I think also prevention. I think yeah. education about prevention. Mm. So if you do have a a darker skin tone and you are pregnant or you are taking an estrogen containing contraception. Realize you are more at risk. Yeah. Yeah. So prevention, use a proper sunscreen. Mm. Uh, you're less likely to, people with darker skin tone are less likely to get skin cancer, mm. but they're more likely to get melasma. And uh, can that melasma become permanent? It can drop into dermal it and it could yes. be yeah. as stubborn as a lifetime sure, sure. pigmentation. Okay. And I always say just one bad uh, exposure to the sun, you know, that, that can set you back years, you okay. know, sometimes. Wow. So... Obviously, in the beginning, it's usually epidermal. Mm-hmm. So, but if you nip it in the bud early, then it, yeah. it is treatable. Yeah. yeah. So the second pillar, I think, also talks to prevention. So using pro- products that really can help in preventatively if you're predisposed. I think just continually using products that contain ingredients that are well proven to help with uh, pigmentation. So ingredients like azelaic acid, kojic acid, ascorbic acid, tranexamic acid, glutathione, soybean extract, those are all ingredients that we know have proven abilities to help lighten pigmentation. And we mentioned the sunscreens and you mentioned blue light. Mineral UV filters are obviously advised during pregnancy, but also having iron oxide is a key one as well. Mm -hmm. So that stops the visible light uh, penetrating the skin. Specific products that we recommend on Dermastore for melasma, our antioxidants are super important. We know brands like SkinCeuticals, Modiderm, Abaji, Mesosthetic, particularly the DSP Bright Ampules with, with tranexamic acid, uh, ascorbic acid, uh, like we mentioned, or butin, we're always recommending. And then in terms of sunscreens, I don't know, what are you guys um, top we, of mind? We definitely default to minerals. Okay. So uh, top of mind would be a Helio K mineral tolerance, color science, face shield. And we've recently launched Eyes Clinicals, Eclipse, so that's and those are mineral sunscreens. So those are our go-to, and they do have iron oxides in as okay. well. And the reason why I think pillar pillar one lifestyle because that's every day, mm-hmm. but onto that pillar two is. I love skincare because it's a practice and a ritual that you do every single day. Mm -hmm. We've said it before, melasma, it doesn't sleep. The hormones don't take a break. So if we're using skincare every single day, we really are you know, keeping and suppressing it as much as we can. In-clinic treatments and prescription products are important and we can use them adjunctively. But I I like to encourage a practice of every single day habits. Totally. Um, so those the pillar ritual. one and yeah, pillar one and two are critical. 
And then obviously pillar three, it's got to that point where you need a prescription and Dr. Webster, what do you recommend in your practice? So hydroquinone is like still the gold standard. Okay. So Albert Kligman, the very famous dermatologist, he had the original Kligman formula, which was hydroquinone. It contained tretinoin as well as some cortisone. And that is still the, so the gold standard. I personally use a modified Kligman's formula. So I find the tretinoin can be irritating. And I don't like using the cortisone, you know. So I have my own little, we all have our own little secret little formulas. I have one that's more on an aqueous base with just with hydroquinone. I generally use either 4 or 5% hydroquinone. It works extremely well. It's cheap. Okay. So I give a prescription and they go to the pharmacy. I only use certain pharmacies. And it, and it works like a bomb. Patients love it. The only thing is you can't use it too long. Yeah. You know, it's got to so be... So how long does a patient um, use it? Again, it depends upon their skin type, but generally we don't want to use it longer than six months. Mm. Okay, that's yeah. quite long, actually. Yeah. And then it's soon after that, you go on to your... Call. Cosmeceuticals. Okay. But then often what I'll do is I'll wean them off. I won't stop them suddenly. Okay. So I'll wean them off the hydroquinone because the patients love it, you know, because they love this, because it's cheap and it and works. And it's giving you a good result. Yeah, so yeah. then I'll wean them off it. So then I'll say, maybe use the hydroquinone once or twice a week and then introduce my cosmeceutical okay. uh, that's suitable for their skin type. Yes. You know, sometimes you might want to use a serum, sometimes you want to use a cream, mm -hmm. and obviously different price points as well. Exactly. So always yeah. look out for those key ingredients mm. that we've mentioned. Yeah. And Fine. just to make a note here, because it's a very common question, is of course a pregnant lady who is experiencing melasma mm. um, can't use no, hydroquinone. So th that's where, again, the cosmeceuticals play such an important role in helping yeah. with melas. And Dr. Webster, how does in-clinic treatments come play a, a role with treating melasma? They can help. Again, you've got to be extremely cautious, especially people with a darker skin tone. Unfortunately, there's a lot of clinics that will prop, uh, promise a sort of a magic bullet, you know. Mm. So uh, certainly uh, chemical peels, mild chemical peels, medical microneedling can help, fractional laser can help. But I would say... In my experience, you've got to be extremely careful with that. Sometimes it can make it, it can end up being worse. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, consultations, incredibly important. Yeah. And I think choosing the right modality for the, the concern yeah. is also really important. So I have a skin therapist, a very experienced skin therapist in, in my practice, and she does those things. She okay. does mild peels. She does the medical microneedling. She does the fractional laser. Okay. It, you will get some improvement. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But again, it's the ongoing treatment. Yes. Yeah. It seems like a very stressful condition for a lot of people, I think, because it's not easy. Uh, it, can, the, it can be easy depending on the severity. But I mean, what are the kind of like motivating, well, how do you motivate your patients that it will get better? Obviously, you don't know, uh, depending on the severity. But what do you, what do you say to them when you, they like have been going for a while and it's n not responding? So often that initial consultation is very important. You know, you assess the patient and if that patients often will come to me and say, doctor, I've had melasma for 10 years. I've seen five other dermatologists. I've seen skin therapists. Then I know that is deep dermal melasma. Yeah. And this is going to be a chronic problem. And you've got to give them realistic expectations. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there's some clinics that will offer them this magic peel. Mm. It's all going to be gone. Yeah. And I see people that are very disappointed that actually end up being worse. Yeah. So I think that initial consultation is so important, realistic expectations. This is if the deep dermal melasma. It's a chronic condition. Yes. It's a long road. It's a long road. Yeah. yeah. And they've got to realize that. Yeah. You know, they've got to realize that. We will get improvement. I always say when I prescribe that initial hydroquinone, I say, you're going to get an improvement. The degree of improvement is difficult to predict. Because when I look at the patient just from the clinical thing, I don't know exactly where that pigment is sitting. Yeah. Most time, it's a combination of epidermal with dermal. Mm -hmm. So initially, that epidermal pigment will clear nicely, but that deep dermal uh, pigment will, will, is going to be more stubborn. So, yeah, realistic expectations and I think patience, mm, you yeah. know, persistent and, and patience. just managing your sun exposure very, very closely. Very important. And as Laura said, <coughs> it's a daily routine. You've just got to, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, it's like taking a blood pressure pill, you know. You've got to, you know, you've got to just realize you've got to do that stuff every day. Yes. And that sunscreen and all those, the lifestyle things are everyday thing. Yes. And something that I also wanted to share that I think maybe a lot of people, women, it doesn't bother them. Yeah. Maybe the the melasma moustache 
for example, because they know that they're on the pill or they know that they had a bit of sun in the holidays. But something that I just would like to bring to their attention is that it can get worse and it can become really, you know, Mm. permanent almost. So let's just try, let's just be aware of preventing that from happening. Yes. And now as after the holiday season, we are seeing online and in my practice that it is it, a lot of people are, that it is struggling worse. Yeah, are struggling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's just emphasizes the lifestyle things because it's you have a, a, a beautiful summer holiday in South Africa, yes. and you just you just got to be careful. Yes. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay. Still do the things you enjoy, but just be careful. Definitely. Yeah. Right. I think that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much again for joining us. Take care out there, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe if you're keen to learn more about what we have to say. We would also really love your thoughts, ideas, and any questions you have for future episodes. You can email us on pod at dermastore.co.za.